Did you know that these guys actually use their nighttime rest periods to do some pretty complicated math to ensure not only their own health, but also that of their offspring and descendants? We like to say that plants do math at night. So plants are pretty amazing things, you've got to admit. They feed us, they soak up our CO2, and although these guys might be a little bit small for it, they can also shelter us as well. I mean, when you think about it, we actually need them a lot more than they need us. So you're probably already at least somewhat familiar with how plants spend their days. The process of called photosynthesis basically involves plant using energy from either a grow light or of course the sun. And what they're doing is converting water and carbon dioxide into oxygen and glucose. Now this process of oxygen and glucose accumulation, it only happens during the day when the sun is up or the grow light is on. So a few years back, there were some scientists at the John Innes Institute in the UK. And basically what they proved is that plants do math at nighttime. Essentially what they're doing is looking at the length of the nighttime period to figure out how to ration their glucose supply. So if they know that there's going to be a really, really long night ahead, they'll look at available glucose supply divided by hours of darkness and they'll deduce that they need to consume that glucose quite slowly. If however, they know that there's gonna be a shorter nighttime period, then they can afford to consume it more quickly and their rate of glucose consumption will be higher before the sun comes up um, and the next day starts. So what plants are doing in the evening is basically exhaling all of the oxygen that was accumulated during the day. Um, as they do that, what they're using that glucose for is actually growth. So it's actually at nighttime when the lights are out, the plants are likely to change shape the most because it's at that time that they're using those glucose to form new stems, new branches, new leaves, and new flowers. Other really interesting things that plants are doing at nighttime when it's dark is they're keeping tabs on what time of year it is. And obviously temperature is really important for this, uh, these calculations as well. Now, the reason that they're doing that is they're trying to predict the changing of the seasons. Uh, plants have been around long enough to know that at certain times of the year they're likely to perish. So if they know that a particularly cold period is coming up and they're unlikely to survive it, they will figure out before that period arrives that they need to start producing seeds. They will produce those seeds so that they can obviously ensure their you know, lineage and future generations survive. The other really clever thing they do is disguise or hide those seeds into fruits and vegetables so that animals and humans, we will be enticed to go and pick up their seeds for them and distribute them across the planet. Some plants have become you know, quite expert at this. Take coffee for an example. That is a plant that not only offers a delicious fruit, it's also uh, caused us to almost become addicted to it. Um, most of us have a daily coffee routine. And you know, that plant has literally spread to all corners of the globe, all because it has this very, very enticing fruit um, and seed that it wants us to pass on and distribute. Okay, so if plants are doing all of this cool stuff like growing and exhaling oxygen at nighttime, then an obvious question might be, why don't we just let them sleep all the time? And then they would grow more and exhale more oxygen. Well, unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. We do need some daytime period for plants because that's when they absorb all their energy. You see plants, um, a bit like us, where, where we have like a certain uh, calorific or number of calories calories that we need to intake every day. Um, and we need those calories to grow and fuel us and energize us. If we don't get enough calories, then we're gonna feel hungry. If we're severely deprived of calories, then we'll you know, get very, very frail and we could even die from it. Exactly the same thing applies with plants and light. I mean, that is, light is their source of energy. And if you don't give them enough of it, then they're gonna be frail, weak, and die. And in fact, I would say, I mean, we've been doing this for kind of four or five years now. 
I would say that at least 80, maybe 90% of the time, um, when we have customers who are experiencing issues with their indoor gardening, it's because they don't have the light situation sorted out. And essentially they're, they're just starving their plants. And um, you know, it's a very, very common reason for indoor gardens not to be successful. So you definitely need to understand um, what is the daily light requirement for these plants. Now for plants like these, which are all edible plants, I've got cilantro, uh, tomato, and a little basil plant here. Um, they vary a bit in terms of their DLI requirement on the low end. Um, you might get away with a DLI of 10. Um, there's some cultivars of peppers and other fruiting plants like tomatoes um, that are actually gonna be quite happy with a DLI or daily light integral uh, as high as 25 or 30. Um, by comparison, your more decorative plants um, are gonna really only need a, D a DLI or daily uh, light integral of between one and four. Um, so they're much, much lower. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind, keep that in mind and make sure that you are giving plants both a daytime period and a nighttime period and the length of those uh, day and night periods is really, really important. We have a bunch more other uh, videos, which some of which I'll link up here. And in fact, there's one particular coming out soon. It's probably going to be our next video that we put out, which is going to look at the topic of uh, light duration in a bit more detail. Um, how plants respond to periods of uh, lightness or daylight and darkness is known as photoperiodism. Um, and you get what's known as long day plants and short day plants. And they're plants that for different reasons prefer either a long or short day, or more accurately, a short or long night. Anyway, more on that in the next video. But basically, um, check this video out and we're going to talk about how you can ensure healthy plants by uh, kind of modifying the amount of time that you have your grow lights on for and how you can actually use that duration of light to either encourage or inhibit flowering. In some plants, you want to encourage flowering because the flowering is what uh, bears fruit. In plants like basil and Cilantro, for example, uh, you actually want to inhibit uh, uh, flowering. Um, when they do flower, that's known as bolting. And at that point, uh, the plant is kind of over and you know you need to start over at, at that point. All right, guys, uh, that is the end of today's video. Uh, again, my name's Nate, I'm from Urban Leaf. And uh, if you've liked this video, um, we'd love to see you here again. You might consider uh, subscribing to the channel. Uh, a couple of other things that I would recommend if you're keen to learn more about uh, indoor gardening or growing your own food at home. First thing, um, we have a website that has a bunch of free resources, blogs. Uh, we've actually put quite a few grow light calculators and stuff up there recently. Um, getting pretty into this grow light stuff of late. The final thing you might want to do is join our Facebook group. Uh, it's called Indoor Edible Gardening. Free to join, of course, but if you jump in there, it's a great place to connect with other like-minded people, great place for troubleshooting. There's a bunch of people in there who know way more about this stuff than we do. So I would encourage you to, to ask as many questions as you want. And it's also a cool place to get some inspiration and ideas, um, just to see how other people's setups look like, what they're doing, how they're doing it and so forth. But anyway, hope to see you there um, again. My name's Nate and I will catch you next time. Thanks guys, bye.